This is AQA Psychology and this is the gender topic. We're looking in this video at social learning theory and how it applies to gender development. So, um, first of all, social learning. You're familiar with this theory already, the idea that learning happens in a social context by watching others. Um, and these are the three main processes that happen as part of it. Vicarious reinforcement, as you remember, that uh, is where we watch somebody else being reinforced or punished and we uh, sort of undergo the same process as part of watching them where, where it's reinforcing our behaviour as well as theirs and that's called vicarious reinforcement because we're not um, having the consequence ourselves, but we're watching somebody else having the consequence so that's vicarious sort of means in in someone's place so if we watch for example our our mother be complimented for wearing a pretty dress if we're a girl then we're more likely to be um, where our mother is being positively reinforced but we're at the same time being vicariously reinforced equally um, if we watch um, our friend who's also a girl being punished for playing with a car if when we're small uh, then we are vicariously punished uh, because although we're not personally being punished, we're observing somebody else being punished and th therefore vicarious punishment takes place, so we're less likely to imitate. Okay, identification. If you remember, we are more likely to imitate a same-sex model. It matters whether or not we identify with the model that we're watching in terms of observational learning. If we don't identify with the model, then we're less likely to, to imitate their behaviour. Mediational processes, that's these things if you remember. Attention, noticing the behaviour. Retention, remembering it. Reproduction, we need to have the ability to copy. And also motivation, um, whether or not we're motivated to copy. So let's put that back in terms of a little girl and her mother. She's watching her mother uh, be complimented on wearing a pretty dress. Um, so therefore she has to watch that for it to have any effect and notice it to pay attention retention she has to remember that it happened and then in terms of reproduction uh, and motivation she has to she has the motivation to copy it because she's been positive or vicariously reinforced her mother has been positively reinforced the compliment for wearing the dress at the same time she's been vicariously reinforced um, because she's seen that positive consequence and therefore she is more motivated to reproduce that action wearing a pretty dress okay so that's an example of how gender appropriate behavior might be reinforced in in uh, through social learning in a child so what does research say? So in terms of Faggot, um, which was a study conducted in 1992, um, this study looked at um, traditional families where you had um, the father uh, went out and worked and the mother was looking after the children. And in those sorts of families, children, when they were interviewed at age four, showed more gender stereotyping than in other families. Um, in more egalitarian families, um, where both parents worked and shared the childcare duties, um, so you didn't have those traditional roles in the same way, children then showed less gender stereotyping when they were interviewed at age four. So it was supporting the idea that gender roles were being learnt from observing parents, so supporting the idea of social learning in children, in quite young children. Um, and then we had a study by Perry and Bussey um, where eight to nine year olds were watching a video of children who chose an apple or a pear and they were con consistently copying the same sex model. So if the boy, if you have a boy watching the video and it was the boy that chose the apple, that boy would then consistently choose an apple. Um, and that supports the idea of social learning because they're identifying with the same sex model and choosing to imitate that model. Um, and that's equally, if you think back to Banjura, that was supported in Banjura, that children were more likely to imitate the, the um, model if they were the same sex as them. Um, however, 
In terms of Perry and Bussy, this was only the case with gender neutral behaviour. So if they were um, showing the children a video of a man wearing a dress, that wasn't copied by um, the male children, the male eight to nine year olds who were watching the video. So that tells us that actually it's perhaps got a slightly limited usefulness in terms of gender appropriate behaviour and gender development because it's not a simple process of watch, imitate, copy sort of thing. It's not as simple as that. It's depending more on other cognitive factors. Um, it's depending on whether that behaviour might is gender appropriate or not. And so other factors are certainly uh, are taking a part in what's happening. Children are, are having a more active role in which behaviour they imitate. They're not they're it's not just a straightforward watch and if you've been reinforced you'll copy it. Children are, are thinking about uh, what's happening and there's co the cognitive factors are playing more of a part. Um, SLT social learning theory has been criticised because it's not developmental. Um, as we know from our looking at Kohlberg and gender schemas, the way that children do respond to model behaviour changes with age and that's really important. There's loads of research that backs up that idea and social learning theory doesn't take that into account at all. They don't look at all at the way that age affects um, how we respond to model behaviour. And that's really important and that's a really key part of um, gender development that is missing from social learning theory. It doesn't look at all at how it changes with age. So that's a really big criticism. And in social learning theory, children really are viewed as passive. They're viewing a behaviour and they may or may not copy it. It's, it's a very passive process. Whereas um, if other research like Kohlberg and other studies show that children really are more active in their learning than that. It's not simply, oh, they might copy it because they've seen it. They're choosing and making choices as to what they copy or um, they're going to try out certain things or they're interacting with it, their environment by choosing a certain activity and then seeing what happens um, and so on. So actually, we need to take more account of those sorts of active processes than social learning takes. So that's social learning theory and gender development.